guys, so today I am bringing you my much anticipated and much requested bookshelf tour. Um, I'm just going to do a quick overview and not really go into cover details and just list them off um, because it is really hard to film bookshelf tours, but I will, as you know, Vlogmas comes, do more collections videos so you guys can get more in-depth analysis on these books, um, but I just thought I'd kind of give you a quick overview of how my books are organized right now. All right, so starting with my top left shelf, I have my Tolkien collection here. So this is the copy of The Hobbit that I had growing up um, in hardback form. I bought this in New York City at a Neil Gaiman uh, book signing a couple of years ago, and I decided to keep that. Um, and then I have my Tolkien Treasury collection, which has four books. Um, I decided to keep that because that was a gift for Christmas last year from my sister, and I really like it. And I haven't gotten around to reading them yet. And then next is my collection of Blu-rays, the extended edition that I've had for ages and I decided to keep those. And then the last part of my Tolkien collection is the cloth bound hardbacks um, that actually retail for over a thousand dollars. I've seen them on eight books and they're quite expensive and they are my favorite set. So I decided to get rid of all the rest of my Tolkien collection. If you watched my Tolkien collection video, you know it was quite extensive. Um, I got it down to a bare minimum and I'm really happy with that. So the next part of this shelf is the Penguin Pocket Classics and kind of just Penguin books in general. Um, I have this copy of Twitter, which I think is out of print, but it's the world's greatest books retold through Twitter. Um, this was a gift many, many moons ago by my friend Cassie. Um, she sent it to me and I just, I find it really funny because um, it's kind of like short form versions of classical literature. Uh, and then I have these Penguin Pocket Classics. I did get rid of one of them that I had read and kept the rest. So I have Guy du Maupassant's A Parisian Affair. Um, I'm not going to pull these out because it's actually really hard to film on this shelf. Um, I have Emile Zola's The Beast Within. I have Emile um, Parda Bazin's The House of Ula. Um, apologies if I mispronounce anything. I have Leo Tolstoy's The Cossacks and Hadaji Marat. It's also really hard to see um, these things, so I'm trying, struggling to see the titles. Um, and then I have Mikhail Bulgakov's The Master and Margarita. I also have The Unknown Unknown, Bookshops and the Delight of Not Getting What You Wanted by Mark Forsyth, which is a little um, kind of pamphlet that came out around, um, oh, the, the bookshop week that goes on in the UK that I managed to get a copy of. And then I have this mini modern classic of E.M. Forrester's The Machine Stops, which I absolutely adore. This is a collection of literary bookmarks um, from the store Obvious State. Um, they're kind of really just nice and I like having uh, note cards that I can send to friends. So the next section is just kind of miscellaneous on this shelf and it is some signed books, the, the only four that I kept. So I've got The Vampire Lestat by Anne Rice because that really influenced me growing up. I have Neil Gaiman's uh, Anansi Boys as well as his Stardust. I have Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. And then just kind of because they fit up here, I have Shirley Jackson's Let Me Tell You and The Literature Book, which is actually a really great resource if you're kind of unfamiliar with a period. So that is the first shelf. So the right upmost shelf is my Penguin Black Spine Classics as well as my Fitzgerald Classics. So I have Aristophanes, The Frogs and Other Play, um, Catherine Mansfield's The Garden Party and Other Stories, uh, Zola's Therese Reckin, which I absolutely adore, Plotus's The Plot of Gold and Other Plays, Balzac's Old Groy. These are also in no particular order. I just kind of threw them up here and I haven't sorted them. Um, I also have Greek Fiction, which is California, um, Daphnis and Chloe and Letters of Chiron. Um, I have Zola's Germinal. I have Balzac's Ursule Mirouet. I also have Balzac's Cousin Bet, which I haven't read yet. Um, I have Ray Russell's The Case Against Satan, which I really love. And if you're looking for a good book um, for Halloween time, I would recommend that. I have Ian Forrester's A Passage to India. I have Elizabeth Gaskell's Sylvia's Lovers. I have Alexander Dumas' The Black Tulip. And then I have Stendhal's The Red and the Black, which I haven't read yet. And then I have Thomas Hardy's A Laodicean. 
So the next portion of this shelf are my F. Scott Fitzgerald kind of gilded classics as well as this fun little Lomography camera. Um, it's a Diana F plus and I just I thought it looked pretty so I put it up there. Um, I almost got rid of these but I decided that I wanted to keep them at the last minute and so yes they they made the move. Um, so I have F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, um, The Last Tycoon, The Beautiful and Damned, uh, Flappers and Philosophers which is a short story collection, um, Tales of the Jazz Age which is another short story collection, Tender is the Night, and then This Side of Paradise. I've actually read all of Fitzgerald's works, so I will probably be doing an author spotlight at some point in the future. So next up I have kind of uh, my vintage Jane Austen collection. Up front I've got a birthday card from Anne from Me on the Pages. I just kind of have it sitting out because I thought it was really cute and it says May the Force be with you, so I've just kept that there. So I'll pull that down so you can see this. So here I have Persuasion, uh, Sense of Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, Pride and Prejudice and Emma. I decided out of all of the Jane Austen books that I own that these were the, like, the, the ones that I was going to keep. Um, I got rid of my cloth bound collection because I did have a complete collection of the six novels um, and so I decided I liked the vintage editions best. Um, then over here on the side I have the Bronte ones that they've recently released. I'm very upset they didn't do a complete set because all of my Bronte novels are in different editions. So I have Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, and Anne Bronte's The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. And I just really like how this is kind of set up. So then the next section of this shelf is my Everyman Library. I did get rid of my copies of Shirley and the Professor um, by Charlotte Bronte because I have the cloth bound, clo or not the cloth bound, the Penguin English Library edition of Shirley. Um, and I got rid of, I think it was... Oh, um, Philip Pullman's The Golden Compass series. So I just have kind of two here. I've got the box set of War and Peace, which is split into three volumes. So I would highly recommend that if you want to read War and Peace. It makes it, kind of breaks it down into more digestible parts. And then I have Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Revisited, which I really like. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Evelyn Waugh's other works, but Brideshead Revisited is absolutely fantastic. So the next shelf that I have is my Oxford World Classics. Um, these are not in any particular order. In fact, I've got some of the biggest ones on the end there to hold them up because as you can see, the shelf is not entirely full. At the end here, I have my ceramic skull, Yorick, and he's just kind of hanging out with them because he fits in well with their color scheme. So to begin with, I have Anne Radcliffe's The Romance of the Forest. I have Mary Shelley's The Last Man. I have M.R. James' Collected Ghost Stories. I have Maria Edgeworth's Belinda, which I absolutely adore. I have Charlotte Perkins Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories, which I've read part of but haven't finished. I have John Polidori's The Vampire and Other Tales of the Macabre, which I really want to get to. I also have The Fortune of the Rogan by Zola. Um, I've read part of this, but I just haven't finished it. Then I have E.T.A. Hoffman's The Golden Pot and Other Tales, which is a collection of German romantic tales um, that I haven't gotten around to but was gifted to me. I also have Alexander Dumas' The Three Musketeers, which I absolutely adore this series um, and don't know where my copies went, so I'm repurchasing them in the Oxford edition. Then I have a collection of elite Victorian Gothic tales. I have Elizabeth Inchbald's A uh, Simple Story. I have Kate Chopin's The Awakening and Other Stories. I have Nathaniel Hawthorne's the Marble Fawn, um, Lacosis's uh, Dangerous Liaisons or Les Liaisons Dangereux, but my French is awful so <laughs> I'm going to spare you that. I have Hardy's The Woodlanders, which I absolutely love. Then I have um, a Mary Elizabeth Braddon's Aurora Floyd, which I haven't read yet but I'm planning on reading in October. I'm just going to scooch over. Then I have Thomas Hardy's Wessex Tales, which I haven't read yet. Uh, George Gissing's The Netherworld, which I'm in the process of reading right now. Um, I have Francis Burney's Cecilia and Camilla, which are these two big ones on the end. I absolutely love Francis Burney, so I picked up her other two, um, and I will eventually get to them. So that is my Oxford World Classics shelf. So next up, the next two shelves I have are my Penguin English Library shelves. They are the shelves you generally see in the background of my videos now, um, just because they're just above the back of my couch. Um, so to start with, I have my Thomas Hardy collection in the Penguin English Library. So I have The Return of the Native, Tessa the Dubervilles, The Mayor of Casterbridge, um, Far From the Matting Crowd, and Two on a Tower, and Under the Greenwood Tree. Next up, I have E.M. Forrester's Howard's End and A Room with a View. 
Then I have George Eliot's works, uh, Daniel Deronda, The Mill on the Floss, and Silas Marner. Then I have Sir Walter Scott's Ivanhoe, Henry Fielding's Joseph Andrews, Joseph Conrad's The Secret Agent, and Tobias Smollett's uh, Humphrey Clinker. I'm just going to pan a little bit so you can see the rest of the shelf. Uh, then I have Charles Maturin's Melmoth the Wanderer, Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford, her Mary Barton, Wives and Daughters, and North and South. Then I have Samuel Butler's The Way of All Flesh, which I'm really looking forward to getting into. I have Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, Charlotte Bronte's Shirley, and her Villette. Then I also have Wilkie Collins' The Woman in White, as well as The Moonstone. I also have Frances Burney's Evelina, H.G. Wells' uh, The Time Machine, no, this is The Island of Dr. Moreau, and then this is The Time Machine, and then I have Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and then the last book on this shelf, which I'll pull out because it's a little um, dark in that corner, is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, which is just fantastic and over-the-top sensationalist literature. So the next shelf over contains my Charles Dickens works. Um, I am short two of these in the Penguin English Library edition, uh, Nicholas Nickleby and Our Mutual Friend, which I really want because they're two of my favorite Dickens, but I'm slowly trying to track them down, um, but with little avail. So in the meantime, I have Dombey and Son, which I'm planning on reading in the near future. I also have Martin Cheselwit, uh, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, The Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist, which is one of my least favorite Dickens, um, Little Dorrit, which is just such a sweet, sweet book. I also have The Old Curiosity Shop, which I'm going to be reading next month for Victober. I also have Bleak House, which I absolutely adore. Then I have David Copperfield, another one of my favorites. Barnaby Rudge, which I haven't read yet, and Great Expectations on the end there. And the slow pan. Then I have A Christmas Carol, which I've read. I'm kind of iffy about A Christmas Carol, but I've I find it interesting to write papers on, but not so much to read. Hard Times, which is another one that was kind of lackluster, as well as A Tale of Two Cities. And that is my entire Dickens collection. Up next, I have Anthony Trollope's The Chronicles of Barsetshire. So I have The Warden, Barchester Towers, Dr. Thorne, Framley Parsonage, The Small House at Allington, and The Last Chronicle of Barset. I have read all of these and absolutely adore them. The Warden is definitely the weakest one, the first one in the book, uh, in the series, but I highly, highly recommend them. I absolutely love them. And then the last four here are my Sir Arthur Conan Doyle ones, so I'm just gonna pull these out because it's a bit dark in that corner. So I have The Sign of Four. I'm just kind of reaching over my camera here. The Valley of Fear. A Study in Scarlet and The Hound of the Baskervilles, which is the only one that I've actually read. Um, I did, for my birthday, purchase the last three in this set that I need, um, but they haven't arrived yet, so I get to I get to say that this is the 163 books that came with me. So now on this shelf I have my um, VMC designer editions. I have Elizabeth Taylor's Angel and her A View of the Harbor. I have The Diary of a Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield. I have Daphne du Maurier by Rebecca, as well as My Cousin Rachel and Jamaica Inn. Um, I've only read Rebecca on the shelf. I did previously own Frenchman's Creek, but I got rid of it because I just didn't enjoy it, so it didn't survive the move. I have The Valley of the Dolls um, by Jacqueline Suzanne. A Fire Cry from Kensington by Muriel Spark, The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter, and The Tortoise and the Hare by Elizabeth Jenkins. I also have Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle, and then I've got my Penguin Cloth Bounds. They are much, much reduced from what I had at my um, old place. I have Love and Friendship by Jane Austen, Middlemarch by George Eliot, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. And then I have my much reduced vintage collection. Um, now two of these I didn't move. They were birthday presents, both from Yamini and Anne from Beyond the Pages, and Yamini's channel is The Skeptical Reader. Um, so I have John Burnside's The Dumb House, which I brought with me. Then 
Yomini Got Me Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. And then I have Elizabeth Vaughn Arnin, The Enchanted April, which actually just came yesterday, and that's from Ange. Then I have Shirley Jackson's Life Among Savages and Raising Demons, which are her kind of nonfiction short stories. I have Edith Wharton's The House of, House of Mirth and the Age of Innocence. I have Richard Adams' Watership Down. I'm going to move the camera so you can see this a bit better. And then I have Michael Scott's Irish Myths and Le Legends. The only reason that this survived, it's not the nicest copy, but I actually got this in Dublin and it holds a very fond place in my, in my heart. And then I have the library book, which is a collection of short stories and essays on libraries. Next up is my kind of classic section as well as my Penguin Modern Classics. Um, so here I have these fantastic editions of Euripides plays. Um, they're done by the University of Chicago. Um, so I have volumes one which contains um, Electus, Medea, The Children of Heracles, and Hippolytus, which I've read all of these. Um, and then I've got Edition 5, this is the first one that I got, which contains the Bacchae, Iphigenia, and Alice, the Cyclops, and Rhesus. I've read all of these as well, and I've ordered the Volume 2 just because my rule is when I finish a collection, I can order the next one. Next up, I have um, these kind of northern stories of the Northmen, I think is the series what it's called, and I've got the Wanderer, Elegies, Epics, and Riddles, as well as the Saga of the Volsungs. Um, there are three more in this collection that I want to get, and I might, might splurge and get them for my birthday, so we will see. And then I have Muriel Sparks' The Driver's Seat, which I really enjoyed. Jean Reese's Wide Circles to Sea, which is also fantastic. Um, Ludmilla, and I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this. Petrushevskaya. Um, there once lived a woman who tried to kill her neighbor's baby, which is scary fairy tales. I haven't read that yet. Then I have my Shirley Jackson collection. So I have The Sundial, Hangs a Man, The Bird's Nest, The Road Through the Wall, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, and The Lottery and Other Stories. I am missing The Haunting of Hill House because I had it in the Penguin Horror collection and I just haven't replaced it into the modern classics. Then I have some Virginia Woolf. I have Orlando and Mrs. Dalloway. Then I have Patrick Suskind's Perfume, um, which I absolutely love. And then I have Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita, which I haven't gotten to yet. The next section of this shelf is my Persephone classics. So I have Saplings by Noel Straitfield, which I haven't read yet. The Making of a Marchioness by Frances, Frances Hodgson Burnett. Uh, William, an Englishman by Cicely uh, Hamilton. Harriet by Elizabeth Jenkins. The Far Cry by Emma Smith. And Making Conversation by Christine Longford. Then I have A Little Cactus and my John Wyndham collection. So I have The Trouble with Lichen. The Day of the Triffids, The Midwitch Cuckoos, um, Plan for Chaos, The Seeds of Time, I think that's what that says, yes, the Seeds of Time, um, Consider Her Ways, The Kraken Wakes, it is the Kraken, yeah, The Kraken Wakes, Chalky, and The Chrysalids. I've read about half of these, I think I still need to read The Midwitch Cuckoos, Plan for Chaos, The Seeds of Time, and then Consider Her Ways, and then that's it. I finished my, my John Wyndham. So that is my bookshelf collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this updated look. I do actually have four empty shelves on the bottom of my shelf and that feels really good. And as you guys have seen, my books are definitely not packed in like they were on my old shelves. So I will see you guys in another video. Bye!